Hi, Brenton Ford here. Welcome to Swimming News for the Week. This week we look at your head position when you breathe in freestyle and how you can change it to make your stroke more efficient and faster. We also give you a diving tip which will help you get off the blocks quicker and we also look at exercises that you can do in training if you've injured your shoulder and you have to resort to kick. Now one of the biggest things I see done in freestyle which slows swimmers down is when they breathe with their head too far out of the water. So rather than keeping one goggle in the water, one goggle out of the water when they breathe, which is ideal, they are breathing with both goggles out of the water and lifting their forehead too, too far out. If you look at this video of Sam swimming here, you'll find that half of his head's in the water, half of it's out, and his body stays in alignment when he takes that breath. Now, a lot of swimmers will breathe too far around, so they lift their forehead and their eyes too far out of the water. And that will throw your hips out of position and it will slow down your speed. So if you want to swim with a faster head position to keep your speed going, then breathe a little bit more towards your shoulder so that you keep your body in alignment when you take that breath. I see the same thing happen with breaststroke, is that swimmers will lift their head up too high when they take that breath and their, their head and their torso won't be in alignment when they come up out of the water. If you look at this video of Jeremy swimming, you'll see that his torso and his head is in alignment when he comes out to take that breath. So if you want to maintain your speed in your breaststroke, a good way to do that is to keep those two things aligned. A problem that we all have is motivation with training and getting to the pool when you don't feel like training. A good solution for this I've found is to say to yourself that all you've got to do once you get to the pool is 500 meters. You don't need to finish off a whole session, you've just got to do 500 meters. And what you might find when you get there is that your mind wants to complete the task. So you might get there and you'll do 500 meters but you'll feel like that's not, a lot, not enough and you want to complete the whole session that you intended to do. And if you only do 500 meters and you want to call it quits, that's fine as well. But more, more times than not, you'll probably find that you want to finish off the whole session. A good way to back up your training for the next session to make sure that you're feeling good and you perform well for your next session is to have a good swim down or cool down, cool down as we like to call it. And I find that 400 meters or more is ideal. And if you can add some short sharp sprints into that cool down, then that's a good way to flush out the lactic acid from the system that you've built up throughout the session. So if you're doing 400 meters cool down, then if you can do four to six 15 meter sprints, then you might find that that helps get rid of the lactic acid from your system so that you can perform better at your next session. If you look at elite swimmers when they start from the blocks, you'll find that their center of gravity is just over the front of the block. So that when the, the starter says go, all they've got to do is shift their weight forward and then they can go from the blocks. They're not leaning back and they haven't got their weight behind them because then they've got to shift their weight forward which can take an extra 0 0.2, 0 0.3, half a second which is too long off the start. So if you want to have a quick start and you've got the new blocks with the step at the back then keep your weight just over the front of the block that way you don't need to move your weight forward too much and it's a good way to get out quickly off the start and give yourself a good chance at getting out there from the very start of the race. If you've injured your shoulder and you have to resort to doing kick in training, then it can be frustrating, but it's a good opportunity to work on some skills with your swimming. So I like to get a snorkel and practice butterfly kick with your arms by your side. You'll find that that is a very good way to work your core and it's a good workout. You can also do single arm freestyle and just work on your pull with your other arm. You can also do body rotation kicks. So you've got a snorkel, your head's down, you've got your arms by your side, you're kicking freestyle and you're rotating from side to side. And that way you're practicing your rotation from using your hips and your core to rotate. So if you have to resort to kick and you can't do pull in your swimming if you're injured, then just resort to the skills and the basics and practice those things while you can. Another good thing to do is to grab the stretch cords that you use out of the pool, the ones with the hand paddles, and to practice your pull with those. So it's a good way to maintain your strength outside the pool if you can't uh, do it inside the pool because you're injured. That's it for Swimming News this week. Looking forward to seeing you next week.